I, Mayor Matt Girding, call the July 15, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin. Yep. Vincent? Uh, he's excused. Gibson? Here. Parody Catanzaro? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? I'm here, just slow. <laughs> Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Excused. Austin? Here. All right, Councilor Mishu will lead the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Perfect timing. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on the agenda are any scheduled public hearings. We have none tonight. Uh, item five is comments by visitors. City, uh, excuse me, the Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any persons, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Seeing no one, we will move on to agenda item six, which is the approval of the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on June 17, 2024. Do I have a motion? Councillor Austin. I'll move adoption of the consent calendar. Councillor Austin moves the consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Question for the council is on the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you'll state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Item seven on the agenda is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments this evening by councilors? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda eight, or agenda item eight, which is communications. We have none. Item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. We have none. And 10 is the mayor's report. A few item, items tonight. Uh, first up, I want to remind folks uh, that the filing period for the special city elections opens uh, this Wednesday on July 17th and will go until August 1st. So anyone who is interested in running in our September 10th uh, special election for either Ward 5 School Board, Ward 3 School Board, or at-large city council should file their intent to run with the city clerk during that period. Um, secondly, I do want to uh, promote our Do Don't Trash Summersworth events. Uh, Councilor Cameron is not here tonight, but she did flag for me that they have one coming up on July 20th uh, from 2 to 3 o'clock at Willan Pond Trails. So anyone who's interested, they could use the help to help clean up the trails. Um, next, I have a report out on the Mayor's um, Housing Task Force. I'll try to be quick with this. Uh, we had a meeting <coughs> on July 9th uh, 2024, um, we discussed in a, our goals, uh, but decided that uh, because we're hopeful that more people can take time to look at them, that we would move forward with uh, having an actual vote on our goals at our next meeting. From there, we discussed some of the priority areas of focus for the task force. Um, the task force had recently met at a workshop with Stratford Regional Planning Commission at the workshop we identified a number of priority areas. Uh, of those, we highlighted three that would be priorities for Strasburg Regional Planning Commission. So that was recategorization of multifamily, uh, dissolution of base districts under form-based codes, and the allowance of residential or mixed use in the CI slash CN districts. Um, those were focus areas for Stratford Regional Planning. And so as a committee at the meeting that we most recently had, we thought we would discuss some of the other priority uh, areas that were discussed at the workshop previously. Um, the, we started 
by talking about some of the challenges in the cities. We kind of discussed multifamily, and from there we started to discuss uh, how parking and multifamily units are kind of interrelated. Uh, parking has always been a struggle uh, in terms of like site planning for new development and infill. And um, we really wanted to see potential ways that uh, the city could partner with developers to maybe allow for on-street parking as part of kind of their plans for uh, development. Um, in doing so, however, we kind of realized that this had almost like trickle-down effects to other areas. And the biggest area of, that we kind of identified as like if we wanted to move forward with this uh, was uh, winter parking bans because if we're allowing more uh, residential um, uh, units to utilize <laughs> on-street parking, we run into struggles with winter parking bans when all those cars all of a sudden need a place to be. Um, Councillor Witham, who chairs um, Public Works and the Environment, uh, said that he would take that up as a consideration at their next meeting, so they will soon be discussing uh, changes to the winter parking ban to potentially allow for more flexibility and identifying areas in the city uh, that maybe could be uh, areas where people can park so that it makes it more easy uh, for residents during this time and more um, friendly to folks who utilize our on-street parking in the winter. Um, from there, the task force discussed adjustments uh, to our zoning ordin ordinance regarding accessory dwelling units. This has been a big uh, focus area for the task force and we were quite excited to actually start diving into this and making some uh, recommendations. Um, we looked quickly at the ordinance, we read through it as it reads in our city uh, zoning ordinance and we had a motion come out that actually uh, was to make a recommendation to allow for detached accessory dwelling units uh, whereas it is currently written as only allowing for attached accessory dwelling units. Um, so again, the motion would change that language. It would also remove specific sections that uh, were specific to the attached language. So again, removing a section that talked about allowing attached units via a breezeway or something like that, um, as well as removing uh, sections uh, that were related to how the appearance of the home, saying that it couldn't look like a duplex or something like that, which we felt was a bit um, subjective. And uh, if we are allowing for separate units that are on the lot that are detached from the home, it goes directly in the face of the mission of that ordinance change. Um, the, uh, it was recommended that it go before the planning board for review prior to coming to council, but I wanted to flag that for folks that it will be coming to council after it goes before the planning board. Uh, planning board has no oversight, but it, we felt like it was important to flag this for them just so they could have a look at it and provide a recommendation to council before it comes to us. At, at some point soon after that, we will all see it, uh, the ordinance change, and it will um, be up for us to vote on. From there, uh, we had one more final kind of thing that we highlighted, which was a very kind of nuanced language that is written in one of our tables of uses, uh, table 4.8.1, which essentially has a footnote that limits um, conversion of buildings into multifamily units if the building was built after a specific date in 1989. So it was a, a strange limiting footnote that seemed to kind of be arbitrary and um, had been highlighted during our workshop as something that seemed to be a fairly easy and quick change. Um, we discussed how this was something we were all in agreement on uh, fixing, but because of potential uh, kind of downstream effects of any edits, we were more uh, hopeful that city staff would provide us a recommendation on how to change that footnote prior to making a recommendation out of the committee to council. Um, so we're hopeful that we will see something soon and then that will make its way to us as well to make that change. Um, but from there, we had um, a few other discussion items including like maybe one-way traffic pattern changes, bike spaces, a new development, and other discussions on off-street parking, but for the most part those were the really three priority issues that we discussed. After that, um, we, let's see, set our next meeting which will be August 13th at 7 p.m. and that was pretty much it. Um, so my last uh, item tonight is uh, Something I probably should have 
prepared thoughts for, but have been, I think like all of us, probably thinking too much about over the past few days. Uh, it's about the assassination attempt on former President Trump. Um, I think we, as a city and as a people, can all agree that any sort of political violence or violence involving gunfire or shootings or attempted assassinations is not within the values that we all strive to live by as a community and certainly uh, is highly frowned upon. Um, I just wanted to make that statement that I am just so saddened to see that this is where we are at. Um, I've felt for a while that this election almost seemed so quiet was as if um, for many, many months, and maybe it's because the primary season was very different this year than it normally has been for New Hampshire, um, but it seems that over the past couple of weeks even, things have ramped up to a fervor that I know I have never seen in my lifetime. I know I've never witnessed <coughs> an assassination attempt on a living president or ex-president, and um, it scares me. And I think it scares a lot of us. Um, I think that there's a handful of things that can be said or done, but I think at the very minimum, what I encourage us to do as a community, because you know, as much as I'd like to think that those in power that are in higher positions of office watch our meetings and listen to what we have to say, I have to be a little realistic in knowing that um, that might not be the case. So. In coming to tonight's meeting, I wanted to just think of simple things that we as a community could do to think about this. And where I always lean when thinking about these things is how would I describe this to my classroom? And I'm on summer break right now, so um, there's um, no class to talk about it with, but I think maybe the city in some sense could be uh, how I practice this, because I bet you even when I get to school in August, uh, late August, kids will be asking questions. But um, I think for those who are talking about this with family and friends, I encourage you to just lead in with compassion. Um, whether you do or do not agree with the policies and politics of the man that was the victim of the attempted assassination, um, his life has value and um, the ways in which we talk about it have strong impacts on how people think about the discussion. Um, I know even when it happened, um, the folks that told me about it were making jokes about, oh, you know, this or that. And uh, again, I'm not going to repeat the jokes necessarily, but um, oftentimes it, those jokes came from a place without compassion. And I think that um, we need to remember that discussions of violence and jokes about violence can sometimes beget and further the uh, actions of violence. And so I hope that as we talk about this, we use this as an opportunity to remember that is not who we want to be as a country. That is not who we certainly are as a community. Um, and so I hope that uh, everyone can extend a compassionate uh, sentiment towards uh, the ex-president <coughs> and towards others in uh, politics and in their lives. Um, so I just wanted to say it was really sad. Um, I hope, hope, hope that those who have a bigger um, kind of soapbox than I also start to express those same sentiment, sentiments so that the rhetoric tampers down. Um, but I, I do fear that uh, we are heading into an election that is only just beginning and has many more months left in it. And I hope that we can just make it to November with having the only fighting be between policy and not people. So uh, that's all I have. So we'll move on to the next thing. Um, next on the agenda is uh, agenda item 11, which is reports of standing committees. Uh, first up, we have the finance committee, which is Councillor Witham. 
Yeah, no report from finance. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is government operations. Councillor Mishu. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, government Arts, uh, we had a meeting on June 25th, 2024, at 430 here at City Hall. First on the min agenda was to approve the minutes that was held on May 28th, 2024. Second on the agenda was the appointment to boards, commissions, and committees per city charter, city ordinance, chapter 29, administrative codes, and council rules and regulations. Tonight we'll have in front of us the first reading of uh, resolution number 125 to amend the council rules and regulations section 17 appointments which is all openings will be advertised for 60 days on the city website Facebook page government access channel 22 inside City Hall and at the library and once the mayor has made a nomination the position will remain open till the next scheduled City Council meeting the following City Council meeting the nominees are also required to attend that meeting so if there's any questions from City Council, the nominees can answer them. Third on the agenda was ward polls and election of officials. Uh, the City Manager and City Clerk provided information from the New Hampshire State uh, Secretary of State of New Hampshire, and which basically says that if anybody's running for election and they're working at the polls and they're, vote, they're going for a position at the ward polls, they can work the polls. But if you're running for city council, school board, any important position like that, you are not allowed to work the polls. You have to stay out. Except you go and vote, then you leave. Then uh, the fourth is uh, a policy on uh, social media and the website security. Mr. Belmore stated that the city staff has been, uh, has attended recent training on the importance of cybersecurity and the city staff has contacted with the ATOM group to work with the city IT vendors for security and upgrade programs for our system. Uh, fifth on the docket was uh, public comments during committee meetings. And during the meeting, during a committee meeting, it is the direction of the chair if that person or anybody else to uh, allow them to talk if anybody's attending those meetings. So basically what we came out of it, it will be up to the chair and it would be advised that if they want to, they can put it on their agenda so people know they can come up and talk, but they are allowed to talk, but it's up to the chair's discretion. And six was a miscellaneous items, which really wasn't that much, and we adjourned at 5.21 p.m. Thank you. Next up is Economic Development Committee. Councilor Goodwin. No report. Thank you. Next is Public Safety Committee, Councillor Pepin. I have one scheduled for this Wednesday at 4.30. Oh, here thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Public Works and the Environment Committee, Councillor Witham. Public Works and Environment Committee will be meeting tomorrow. Uh, on a lengthy agenda is the snow emergency parking ban, which I look forward to discussing when it's 93 degrees oh. outside. <laughs> so, just interesting. Thank you. And lastly, Recreation Committee, since uh, Councilor Cameron is out, Vice Chair Mishu, is there a meeting? And no report this evening. Thank you so much. All right, next brings us to item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees tonight? Seeing none, we will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of Council, I'll read from my written report to Council that was included in the meeting packet. Uh, jumping down to new business, we have Ordinance 125 to amend Chapter 30, Conduct in Public Parks, the definition section under Section 2. Uh, the Rec Committee voted to recommend these edits to the list of city parks to the full council. They met on June 12th uh, to accomplish that vote and discussion. Uh, as noted the, in, the, in the actual resolution document, the USS Summersworth Pocket Park was part of the sale of the former police station located at 5 Main Streets. And um, uh, there's a couple of other changes in regards to Ash Street Park being called uh, Ash Street Butterfly Park and uh, making recognition of the Veterans Memorial at Stein Park. I did provide a red line uh, document showing those proposed ed edits, and as with all ordinances, I Recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next council meeting on August 12th. Without objection. The next ordinance, 225, to amend police offenses, no parking any time. 
The Traffic Safety Committee met on June 12th also and voted to recommend this ordinance change to the full city council. Uh, attached was a copy of the memorandum from Fire Chief Matt Moore that was provided to the committee along with a map showing the no parking uh, side that is being proposed. Again, recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next council meeting on August 12th. Without objection. And I just mentioned that uh, it is also on the Public Works and Environment Committee as uh, they're meeting Tuesday before the next, the second reading. And uh, public safety might want to take it, take it up also on Wednesday if the chair is so declined to uh, do so. Um, last resolution regarding amending council rules and regulations, section 17, appointment. As mentioned by the chair, government ops committee met on June 25th and voted to recommend these amendments to the full council after uh, some discussion. Again, as we usually try to do, we provided a, a copy of red line showing the proposed amendments. Moving on to other, the vote to authorize the city manager to approve the request by Procon of Manchester regarding waivers of our noise nuisance control ordinance to allow extended work hours for construction activities. Uh, since this project is months away, I uh, recommend the council vote to authorize the city manager to work with Procon to provide reasonable times to complete these construction act activities. Um, since they are not yet able to provide what days or what times, um, it wasn't clear on what you'd actually be voting on, but if you uh, provide me that authorization, I can work with them. And I did provide you a copy of their request, as well as uh, a question I had regarding why we needed to waive uh, the noise ordinance for water taps, which we generally don't do, but it's in regards to traffic if they need to do it. Um, a few informational items, if you will. There's groundbreaking for 22 Green Street Apartments construction project Tuesday 23rd at 10 a.m. If uh, folks are able to make it, uh, there's also a groundbreaking for the, the, the uh, partnership between city and MRSCO for solar ra the solar rate project. And I did provide you some information uh, from MRSCO, and they're working with EPA to de develop a program, uh, not inviting the public, but and we want to limit it to around. Uh, somewhere in the order of a, a dozen to two dozen people, as you saw in the uh, copy of the uh, email, I believe. So uh, if you could tell me if you're available Monday, August 12th at 10 a.m., we'd like to have some city councilors or the mayor to provide a comment or two. I can let them know, as well as let me know about uh, Green Street so that we can share with the developer in case uh, they want to work that into their, their program. And I did provide National Night Out Tuesday, August 6th from 4 to 7 at Jules Bisson Park. And that's been a very successful event over the last many years. And we've held it at Jules Bisson Park, and it's worked out very well. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Members of Council. All right. Brings us to agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward for a vote tonight. David Nagy for appointment to the Conservation Commission as an alternate member with a term to expire June 2027. Tony Karen for appointment as a Ward 3 select person with a term to expire January 2026. And Terry Ritter for appointment as a Ward 2 select person with a term to expire January 2026. What are the wishes of the Council? Yes, Councillor Witham. Uh, move that we approve the slate of nominees. Councillor Witham moves to approve the slate of nominees. I'll second that. by Councillor Mishu. Um, all right. The question before the Council is on the confirmation of the slate of nominees. Discussion? Seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you are opposed, please state by saying nay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, eyes appear to have it. Eyes have it. Nominees have been confirmed. <coughs> All right, brings us to item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none, uh, which brings us to 15, unfinished business. First up, we have uh, one resolution tonight. Uh, so the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 54-24, which is to authorize the city manager to waive bidding requirements and extend the contract with Resource Management, Inc. of Holderness, New Hampshire for lagoon maintenance at the Summersworth Water Treatment Plant. City Clerk. Resolution number 5424, to authorize the city manager to waive bidding requirements and extend the contract with 
Resource Management, Inc. of Holderness, New Hampshire for lagoon maintenance at the Summersworth Water Treatment Plant. Thank you. Resolution 54-24 having been read a first and now second time is open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, I will look for a motion on Resolution 54-24. Yes, Councillor Pepin. Move for adoption. Councillor Pepin moves for the adoption of Resolution 54-24, seconded by Councillor Goodwin. Motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 54-24. Discussion. Okay, seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 54-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. Resolution 54-24 has been adopted. That brings us to item 16 on our agenda, new business. First up, we have our ordinances. We have two. Uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on ordinance 1-25. We did it. We're in year 25, everyone. <laughs> to amend chapter 30, uh, conduct in public parks, section 2, definitions number 2 uh, regarding edits to the list of city parks. City clerk. Ordinance number 125, to amend Chapter 30, Conduct in Public Parks, Section 2, Definitions Number 2, July 15th, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth, as amended, be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 30, Conduct in Public Parks, Section 2, Definitions Number 2, as follows. Remove USS Summersworth Pocket Park and rename Ash Street Park to Ash Street Butterfly Park and add Veterans Memorial at Stein Park. Background, the city of Summersworth sold property located at 5 Main Street, the former police station, of which the USS Summersworth Park, Pocket Park was included in the sale. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors Nancy Cameron, Richard Micho, Martin Pepin. Thank you. Ordinance 1-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will have a public hearing. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 2-25 to amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, No Parking Anytime, regarding prohibiting parking on the northerly side of Willand Drive. City Clerk. Ordinance Number 225, to amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, No Parking Anytime, July 15th, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1.D, No Parking Anytime, by adding the following. Willen Drive on the northerly side from Route 108 to Commercial Drive. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councillor Richard Misho. Thank you. Ordinance 2-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will have a public hearing. Uh, brings us to our resolutions tonight, new resolutions. Uh, chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on resolution 1-25 to amend council rules and regulations, section 17, appointments regarding board and committee nominees. Resolution number 125, to amend council rules and regulations, section 17, appointments. July 15th, 2024. Whereas the Government Operations Committee recommends amending the City Council Rules and Regulations Section 17 appointments by striking it in its entirety and replacing it with the following. All board and committee members member openings will be advertised for 60 days prior to any board member's term expiration. Pending member openings will be advertised and posted to the greatest extent possible to include City Hall, the Library, Government Access Channel 22, City website, and City Facebook page. The 60-day notice requirement may be waived by the council or other authorized individual or authority. All appointments by the mayor, which require the consent of the council, once made, will remain open until the next regular meeting to allow the members of the council opportunity to properly review the nominee's qualifications. All nominees are required to complete the city's application form for board, commissions, and committees. Nominees are also required to attend the next regular meeting of the city council after their name has been placed on the agenda in nomination by the mayor. All appointments by the mayor which require consent of the council shall be residents of the city. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city council approves the aforementioned amendments to the council rules and regulations section 17 appointments 
effective upon the passage of this resolution. Background, per City Council Rules and Regulations, Section 12, to amend rules, Council rules may be amended or new rules adopted by a two-thirds vote of all members of the Council present. Sponsored by Councilor, Rich, Councilors Richard Michaud, Robert Gibson, Paul Goodwin, Nancy Cameron. Thank you. Resolution 1-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, tonight, under other, we have a vote to authorize the city manager to approve the request by Procon Inc. of Manchester regarding waivers for Chapter 13D, which is our noise nuisance control ordinance, um, to allow extended work hours for constructions for the following dates. So it would be concrete slab on grade placement with an approximate time frame of January 7th to 14th in 2025. Concrete slab on deck placement with an approximate time frame of January 27th to uh, 31st in 2025. And then two six inch water taps on Green Street with an approximate time frame of September 25th to 27th, 2024. What are the wishes of the council? Councilor Witham. I'd like to amend uh, our vote here to just allow the city manager to uh, have the authority to waive uh, our noise and nuisance ordinance as necessary for this project in its entirety. I'd like to second that. All right, we have a motion made by Councilor Witham to waive uh, the noise and nuisance ordinance to allow the city manager control over timing for this project specific, seconded by Councilor uh, Vincent. So again, uh, first up, we have our amendment to this. Uh, is that clear bet before the council? Mm -hmm. All right. Discussion on that amendment? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. <clears throat> it's maybe more towards the whole motion, so should I hold it? Um, go ahead and ask. Okay, we'll so it. just uh, I have no problem with the amendment, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess my question is more for my education. Um, reminding uh, myself and the rest of the council what the actual work hours are permitted by the ordinance and what they have dates, but they don't have a duration of hours. Are we saying mm -hmm. their work starting earlier? Are they going later? Um, having some idea of what your expectation is on uh, the extension would be helpful. City Manager Belmore. Well, in his uh, clarifying uh, email, um, as we get closer to the, um, I might as well just read it in its entirety. That sounds fine. Uh, as we get closer to the concrete placement dates, we would provide the city with an actual update and more specific timeline duration. Typically, we, we would start the concrete placements in the morning, and then depending upon weather and the curing time, we would be on site until after midnight or later. Um, as for the water tap, we were going to try to possibly start this work either early in the morning, earlier in the morning or later in the evening to hopefully limit the impact of Green Street with traffic. If this isn't an option, we will do it during the day, just more of a traffic impact possi possibly. So I think they're looking for both ends of the uh, spectrum. Um, I think I, off the top of my head, I can't recall exactly what the news audience is. I think it's 7 a.m. to 9 p.m.? Seven, 7 a.m. to dust, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Councilor Witham. I think this motion just speaks to the, 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 the nature of construction projects that they're fluid, they're flexible. We're trying to forecast out, you know, months here, and uh, that can be difficult. It might be weather dependent, and I think for us to be business friendly, to use that term, I think allowing the city manager to make that determination with our vote provides the nimbleness uh, for us to work with the developer in an appropriate fashion. I do recall having conversations, I believe at committee level in the past, whether or not these votes were even needed here, but it is an ordinance and only the council can waive ordinance. So we are waiving the ordinance, but we're giving the city manager the latitude as to when and how to do that. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Gibson. Okay. I don't have a basic problem with doing this. My only question would be when they talk midnight, are they just talking, for lack of a better term, keeping an eye on the set period, or is there going to be actual construction noise? City manager. 
I would, I would assume the cur curing time, as you indicated, but w without all s certainty, I, I couldn't unequivocally state that. I'd be working with our city engineer to make sure the timelines were reasonable and needed. I'm okay, um, certainly working with the director of uh, public works and the city engineer to, to be assured that, you know, it's a correct timeline and it's an appropriate timeline. Okay, because my only concern would be over that's a residential area. People have to go to work in the morning. And if there's actual equipment running late, that was my concern. Fair concern. Councilor Goodwin. Yeah, I guess um, I share a similar concern um, with Councilor Gibson, but I think the nuance is, and I would defer to staff to resolve this, uh, active construction activities and noise generating activities are not necessarily the same thing. So I, I trust the staff will dig into what, um, what is appropriate uh, when, because obviously noise generating activities to midnight seems excessive. Um, I, a question perhaps for other members of council, if this has happened in the, in the past, we've had a way of this ordinance and we're just anticipating probably to do it again in the future. Is there a way to fix this so we can permanently delegate the power to staff? My guess would be that we must have either written in rules or ordinance um, a requirement that we are the only uh, individuals that can waive that. We would need to change the city manager seems to be. Go ahead. <laughs> you know. I, I, you know. <laughs> I was guessing. We could look at, at amending the ordinance to delegate that power. Okay. Yeah, you've done that with assessing and some other issues. We've de delegated that authority. Great. Cool. Other discussion? I, for ease of this, I think Councillor Witham, you had proposed it as an amendment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but have it. If we have it as a motion, then we can vote on that. That's all right with you. All right, right with our second. So again, just to clarify, the motion before us is um, to have uh, the wavering of the noise nuisance control ordinance delegated to the uh, city manager to make those decisions specific to this project. Um, is that clear to folks? Just want to make sure. All right. Without further discussion, um, we're going to do a, a roll call vote. So if you're in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you're opposed, please state by saying nay. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro. Yes. Misho. Yes. All right. The waiver has been granted. Thanks, everybody. All right, brings us to item 17, which is comments by visitors. So City of Summersworth and our Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into a debate with any persons, the mayor, council member, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? All right, seeing none. We'll move on to uh, item 18, which is closing comments by council members. We're going to start over here to my left, um, Councillor Pepin. Thank you, Mayor. I wasn't going to say anything at all tonight, but you did bring up the point of uh, what's happening in <coughs> city pol in federal politics and stuff like that, and elections and stuff. Um, I'm an independent. Basically, when I go in to vote, vote, I try to vote for the person that I think is most competent for the job, that is going to work for the people people of Somersworth or people for the United States and that's how I place my votes as an independent. I sometimes think the party system does more harm than it does good because they they split and they fight against each other and they don't come to a common cause. That's one thing I've liked about this city council. I have an idea where their party is but I really don't know and I really don't care and I don't think anybody here is been aggressive to anybody that's on the city council. We disagree, and we learn to know that that's part of the part of the game, and it's not it's not held against that person or whatever. And we get along great with each other. At least I think we do. At least I I don't feel any hard feelings in any person on the city council, and I've I've always felt proud to be able that way. Uh, the politics today has gone so wild, and I think a lot of it's got to do with the press. I mean, no matter what forecast that you, what channel that you listen to, you get a different, totally different attitude. 
and, and it's become to the point where it has come, the things that are being said through the press ends up going into the other people's that's watching it constantly 24 seven now. Uh, and it's gotten to the point that even family members won't even talk to each other because they think the other, they didn't like the way the other person voted. Uh, my father served in World War II, my father-in-law served in World War II, my brother-in-law served in Vietnam. It, it's a shame because those people and the people that s served in the armed forces or whatever gave their lives for the right for us to have the freedom to vote for whoever we felt. And I really, really feel that sometimes it's almost like a form of brainwashing that they're doing to certain people and it gets indoctrinated into them and they can't think on their own. And, and that's what scares me the most out of it. Um, I feel sorry for the, for the retired fire chief that ended up dying and, and his family that has to suffer just because he went for a rally to support somebody and, and the members that got hurt. Uh, it, there should be no need of that, no need of that at all. Um, and especially when you have family members that won't even talk to each other or you, or you can't even bring up the conversation at a dinner table without it being taken it ended up in an argument. It shouldn't be that way. That wasn't the way our country was supposed to be designed for. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Rona. Pretty quiet night here at the uh, city council meeting. Not too many people are talking. It's a fast moving meeting and these uh, members out here want to get home because they hate being at these meetings. Maybe you don't. I'm just, you know, just saying, you know, you worked all day. But I'm going to talk about fireworks for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to talk about fireworks because I think it's important. Obviously, most of you know that I own Hilltop Fireworks. Let's talk about, let's talk about fireworks, the bad things first. Fireworks are a nuisance, aren't they? They keep us up at night sometimes, and I hear them going off and I cringe sometimes. One time we had a city councilor, my good friend over there, Dave Witham, they went to his baseball field, and they shot off fireworks, and they got fireworks mess all over his field, and he was upset, and he had to go out there and clean them. We have to listen to him sometimes on weekends because the Oaks shoots fireworks. My company shoots fireworks to the Oaks uh, for weddings, so it's a celebration thing. And this time of year, we all have to go through the never-ending fireworks drama that we have and i hear on the unofficial website of uh, the city that you know people are complaining about the noise and and i have a dog and my dog's affected by fireworks too nevertheless so that's the bad thing about fireworks and at sometimes people don't use them correctly and they get hurt and for the new fire chief over there they start fire sometimes which is never a good thing let's talk about the good things I opened up my business in 2007 here. I got all the permits I needed. I'm the only fireworks business, or the only business, I think, in the city that pays a $1,500 permit fee. For what? I don't know. But you know what? I don't complain about it. I pay it. Another thing I came before the city council with uh, some time ago is I'm, I'm, I'm saying this not to, like, pat myself on the back, but I've always encouraged other companies to come forth and give a little bit more to your city. Let's talk about how much Hilltop Fireworks has given in the 17 years it's been in business here. To date, Hilltop Fireworks has given $510,000 to not only the community, but the uh, civics organizations that are involved. Let's cover some of the things. And I'm very proud to say this. One of the best things that we've ever supported was I remember when Donald Messia, who was the fire chief here, he's now re retired, uh, his stepson or his son or Cheryl's son, um, however you want to put it, had a lung disease. And they were looking for money to um, uh, give to their family so they could have a, a lung transplant. Hilltop Fireworks gave $5,000 to that. To this day, I think that's the best thing that we ever did because a year later, I got a letter 
that he had full recovery and he was living a normal life. I remember getting the letter in the mail and actually sobbing in my truck at the end of my driveway from the joy that I had to give him that life and a chance to be able to be free from any type of constant doctor visits and, and all that what goes forth with having a lung issue. That was probably the best thing. But some of the other things that I've given, I've given to all the departments, I've given it to public works, saws, money, I've given to the fire department, uh, equipment also, I've given to the police department, and we've given to the school system. One year, we gave like five grand, and so a teacher actually could actually stay there, and I'm pretty sure it was uh, uh, Jackman, um, what was her first name again? Yeah, what was her name? Maureen Jackman, I'm sorry, Maureen, I forgot. Um, so I'm very proud uh, as a business owner to come forth and give this information. And like I said, I'm not saying this to pat my company on the back, you know. I'm saying it because I encourage other companies that are pretty well off in this city. Now, I understand if you're struggling as a company and you can't make it and you've got troubles making ends meet. But if you're a company that's making it, help out your city. It, it just, it makes everything so much better. Uh, and I live by that. Um, this year we had another successful year. So I'm going to propose that uh, I know during the budgetary season, um, we didn't fund, um, I think, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so I'm going to give money to the Chamber of Commerce. I actually talked to the woman from the Chamber of Commerce, and I told her that I was going to give some money to them in the thousands of dollars. I'm proposing tonight to give the fire department. It's a small amount, but it's still an amount. I'm going to give the fire department 500. I'm going to give the police department 500, and I'm going to give public works 500. It's a small amount. In the past, I remember when uh, Dave Kretschmeyer was the chief and I gave 500. He loved it because the department can use it for miscellaneous stuff. If they have a party and they need whatever it may be, they have a little extra money. Um, once again, it's not Pat and Hilltop fireworks on the back. It's just saying, hey, companies out there, if you're making it, help your city out a little bit. It makes everything so much better. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you for your contributions. And just a reminder to businesses, New Hampshire is a pretty low tax state. So if you're looking to maybe use some of that additional revenue, we would love to have it. So thank you. All right, Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Um, we appreciate all you've done for the city over the years. Okay. Um, this probably isn't going to be a very popular thing to say, but there's an old saying, karma is a bee. Um, and what we're seeing in the last couple of days, I think is a direct result of somebody who is notoriously advocating, I don't want to say the overthrow of the government, but um, violent reactions to different things and to people. And I have to agree with Councillor Pepin. Uh, it's a sad state our country's in that one of the people vying for the post of leader of the free world um, was attacked, but it's an environment that's been created by our national politicians. Um, we are fortunate here in New Hampshire. We're a unique state. Um, and don't know if people think about this, but we're the only state in the country that the state government is controlled by the Republican Party, yet all four national representatives are from the Democratic Party, which I think speaks to the way that the people in New Hampshire vote. And one of the things that we could do as a state, I think, is get on the bandwagon with several other states that have gone to open primaries, nonpartisan primaries. And I was sickened 
when the Democratic Party, and I'll admit, I'm a lifelong Democrat, basically told the state of New Hampshire that our delegates are not going to be eligible to their convention because we didn't follow their rules. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, you start paying for the damn primaries and we'll follow your rules. The states fund the primaries as far as the election workers and everything else, and yet let the parties dictate the way they operate. And that, to me, is totally ridiculous. Like I said, if they want, if they want to have their own set of rules for it, let them pay for it. Um, but again, I feel really sad that our country is in the state that we're in now. Um, and as to, again, what Councillor Pepin said, um, I go to certain family gatherings and I end up smoking a pack of cigarettes sometimes because they have to get out of the house and get away from the rest of the family because if politics ever comes up, it's a disaster. So I know exactly what he's talking about. So that's my two bits for the evening. Thank you. Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll echo a lot of what people have said, and I thank you, uh, Mayor Gerding, for your words. I completely agree. Um, leading with compassion, every life has value, and um, to focus on the policies, I completely agree. I'm very grateful, as others have said, too, that we may vehemently disagree on some policies, but I feel very comfortable talking to everybody on council. I'm pleasantly surprised when I see people out and about. It's it's that kind of feeling, and I think that's why we're involved in local politics, because we can really do good, and I'm glad that that camaraderie exists here. Um, one thing I'll just mention uh, on the ordinance, uh, the resolution 125, um, I just want to give a heads up, I'll be offering a pretty minor amendment um, ahead of the next meeting. We do say that we're going to post it on the website and the city Facebook page, I think just for future proofing with social media companies changing. Um, I'll probably be offering an amendment to all official city social media profiles or something to that effect, um, just so that uh, that sort of stands the test of time. I'm trying to think of other things that might be written there in the past that, that we would fax them to people. I don't know. Do we do that anymore? Um, but Facebook page may or may not still be a thing X years into the future. Um, but I hope everyone's staying cool, and that's all for me. Thank you. Councillor Michu. Uh, thank you, Anna. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Vincent for all he's doing for this community. He does a lot. I also like to thank him. He employs my godson. He absolutely loves his job and he loves working for Mr. Vincent. He's an excellent supervisor. Also, I'd like to mention that uh, National Night Out is coming up August 6th at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at uh, Ward 5 Jules B. Swans Park. I hope everybody shows out, shows up for that because it's always a good time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Councillor Witham. Before we started, I had no comment tonight, but Councillor Vincent, uh, I, I want to be very clear. The, the Noble Pines ball field is not mine. Uh, uh, although I'm there a lot, uh, it is not mine. It is the city of Summersworth. It's my unofficial adopt a spot. It is a big spot, but it is my spot. Uh, truth be told, uh, the, the fireworks discharge up there, or knock on wood, has been much better of late. Uh, uh, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that sometimes it occurs and I rake up the litter, right? It's just what happens. Uh, the, the bigger disappointment is when people think it's kind of cool to do it off the top of the pitcher's mound, which I sort of get, right? It's another foot <laughs> off the ground. That's all it is, right? Uh, but the tarp that covers the mound is an $800 tarp. Don't ask me why it's so expensive, but that's what they cost. There's a chain sewn into the edge so it doesn't blow away in the wind. And when they light the fireworks on it, it burns holes in it, and then the water gets through. So that's the, that's the real one that kind of gets your craw, if you will. So for those of you that 
are inclined to light fireworks up there, illegal, I might add, uh, just don't do it on the tarp. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Goodwin. <clears throat> I just wanted to echo in um, uh, Councillor Cameron's absence that the uh, Don't Trash Summersworth event is this Saturday, July 20th from three, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Willen Pond, accessed off of High Street near the liquor store. So if come help uh, the Don't Trash Summersworth crew pick up uh, trash along one of our more beautiful uh, recreation spaces. Thank you. Lastly, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Elections matter. Elections matter a great deal, whether it's a local election or a state election or a national election. Uh, that said, uh, we do have uh, a few openings of local seats that will be voted on during the uh, primary in September. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, the filing period opens this Wednesday. So anyone who is interested in filling either uh, actually this city council seat or the two vacant school board seats, uh, please uh, come in and uh, register for those uh, opportunities and uh, put your name out there and uh, be prepared to put your name up uh, for the residents to vote. And I encourage everybody to come out and vote. And I know this is one of those times when we probably expect to see fewer rather than more people come out to the polls. Uh, but for a whole bunch of reasons, not least of which you now have some local elections uh, that you can uh, chime in on uh, in September. It's important to come out and vote. Uh, so please do so. I encourage you to do that. Uh, I was very saddened by the events of this weekend. I think that, uh, you know, we've heard uh, many, many reports of uh, significant increases in threats being made to politicians across the country at all levels. Uh, even at local levels. Uh, fortunately, I, I think, you know, locally we're doing better than a lot of areas are, but we are not immune to that. Uh, and, and there's a lot of reasons why. There's a lot of blame to go around. Uh, but, it, you know, what? it just, it, there is no place in our society for violence of any kind, and particularly political violence. We have a democracy that's designed to allow people to voice their opinions in a number of different ways. Uh, you can agree with people. You can disagree with people. Uh, we hope we're grown up enough to collaborate and, and compromise and come to uh, decisions that benefit everybody, at least some. I mean, compromise means not everybody gets what they want, but everybody gets something of what they want. I mean, that's the art of compromise, and I, mean, I would hope at some point we can get back to that. We are not there in our country these days. Uh, everybody plants their feet in cement and doesn't move, and uh, that doesn't get anybody anywhere, and in fact results in situations like we saw this weekend, which are tragic, should not happen, and it doesn't matter who uh, is involved, it shouldn't happen, whether you agree, disagree, uh, dislike whatever it doesn't matter shouldn't happen that way democracy is not supposed to operate in a, in a vacuum of violence uh, so i would hope we can get back to a world where you know politics are politics and there will be discussions there will be disagreements but let's be reasonable about it and come to compromise solutions that benefit the whole community at large Thanks. Thank you. I have one final comment because I totally forgot it in my mayor's report. So if you will give me the grace to say it now, that would be much appreciated. It is uh, thank you to the fire department for your amazing 100 uh, year celebration that was last week. It was a phenomenal time. I think there were so many folks who uh, attended um, to catch up with one another who maybe hadn't seen each other in years, if that maybe even decades. So thank you to Chief Moore for what was a great event. Um, and actually, 
on a hot day. It felt pretty nice in there. So thank you for ha having us and for uh, making the time for that event. So thank you. Um, all right, brings us to um, item 19, which is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings? Right, seeing none. Move on to 20, which is non-public sessions. We have none. It brings us to our last agenda item, item 21, adjournment. Councillor Vincent moves that the City Council stand in adjournment until the next regularly scheduled meeting, seconded by uh -huh. Councillor Perry Catanzaro. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, you will state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you will state by saying nay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, ayes have it. We are in adjournment.